Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And in today's video, I'm going to give you my initial opinions on the Carnarvon Action 10, which is the reward for the British Challenge. So a lot of you might be asking the question, now that you know how much time it's going to take from my video on Friday, is it actually worth it? So without further ado, let's get started. So first up, I want to discuss the special design on this vehicle. But again, shout out to Wargaming because I just love this new preset styles. How annoying was it that you used to have to decide about which, what, which vehicle you you wanted to purchase rather than just getting the fear not design which you can remove from your vehicle and then play it like a, a regular Carnarvon Action 10. Personally for me as a proud Brit I think I'm gonna have to have the fear not design on the side of this tank. So statistically the Carnarvon Action 10 is very similar to what the Carnarvon used to be back before it had the 32 pounder and it has a 20 pounder gun. Now while the 20 pounder has better standard penetration than the new 32 pounder on the Carnarvon it has abysmal alpha damage for a tier 8 heavy. 230, yeah, many tier 8 heavies are starting to pack 390 or even 440. And this makes it quite hard to trade effectively with the Carnarvon, and you've just got to make sure you're firing multiple shots into your opponent for every time that they shoot at you. Now, funnily enough, the, the rate of fire doesn't increase that much over the 32 pounder that the regular Carnarvon has, and that's because the regular Carnarvon has incredible DPM. But remember, this is not a premium vehicle, and this Carnarvon Action 10 is. Consequently, this means that if you are looking for very high DPM on a tier 8 premium heavy tank, well, then there's no competition really. The Carnarvon Action 10 is way ahead of even the KV-5, which has abysmal penetration. And if you want to be playing a premium tank with good penetration, well, then it looks like you're going to have to be playing on the Asian server alternatively pick yourself up a Patriot. Gun handling wise, the Carnarvon Action 10, well, it's, it's pretty good news here. 2.3 seconds aim time, but that's not nearly as good as it used to be back with the old 20 pounder on the Carnarvon, which had 1.9 seconds aim time. The accuracy is just a little bit better than the, the standard Carnarvon, but it kind of suffers when it comes to the turret traverse. This is not very good turret traverse for a gun with very bad alpha damage, and you're constantly going to have to be readjusting your aim, even when you make small movements in the turret to be able to try and get your rate of fire actually going. Now, one thing that the Carnarvon Action 10 has is 10 degrees of gun depression, which is lovely, because that means that you can go hull down and hide the atrocious lower plate that I'm going to be highlighting in a second. Mobility-wise, it's just a little bit faster than the regular Carnarvon. We can see with regards to its forward speed, its power to weight, but its traverse is actually just a little bit worse across all terrains, even though it doesn't look like it would have, but that's because this thing doesn't have an upgradable engine like the Carnarvon has, and that messes with the statistics. All right, so now on to armor. It's got to be one of the most important things about a heavy tank, right? And the Carnarvon Action 10 is, is kind of a bit of a mix here. Look at this awful lower plate, 100 millimeters of effective. Everything is going to penetrate this. Look, even if you overangle the tank like this, even tier 6 medium tanks are going to be able to go through your lower plate. The upper plate, not so bad. 215 when you're not angling it at all, and when you're kind of working it on a ridge line like this, the upper plate is absolutely fantastic. But let's put it into a more realistic scenario. You've been caught out in the open, and you're going backwards and forwards, hoping that your opponents are going to miss your lower plate and hit your upper plate. How, how much armor are you going to have? Well, about 220? Yeah, it's not really going to bounce any tier 8 or higher vehicles, unless you get a little bit lucky, but it still can be a little bit useful. Now, one thing that's great about the Carnarvon Action 10 compared to the old Carnarvon oven is that the side plate here is 254 so you can actually now side scrape using this tank unlike you could do back in the day with the original Carnarvon with the 20 pounder. Turret armor wise we can see the vehicle also has 14 millimeters of spaced armor over the cheeks a lot like you would get on the Super Conqueror but the turret armor on this vehicle if you're not angling it at all again it's definitely fallible to tier 8 and higher tanks but as soon as you've got this thing on a ridge line wow now we're talking this kind of sloped forehead of the vehicle is now pretty much an auto ricochet against everything and even heat rounds are going to have a 50-50 chance to bounce off with 330 millimeters of effective armor. Now the spaced side armor here, of course, that's going to be great against high explosive and heat rounds. And it does provide the tank with some protection from the side when you want to be engaging an opponent, and you don't want to have, and you still want to be able to ricochet vehicles that might be shooting you from the left and the right. So we can see at about 217. It's going to protect you from the smaller rounds, but definitely not from the larger rounds. And the whole of the side profile of this tank is just as garbage as the regular Carnarvon. And it's a really easy big box of a tank for artillery to hit on the back with only 17 millimeters of upper hull protection. And so all in all, this means that you want to try and get your Carnarvon Action 10 on a ridgeline if you want to be successful. Now onto some of the softer statistics about the vehicle. The health, slightly less than the regular Carnarvon. And the view range, now this is a bit of a shocker really. 380? Yeah, that's really awkward. 
I feel if I'd had 400 meters base view range, I could have used improved vents on this tank, but I would probably recommend taking coated optics instead, because 380 base view range, you're never, even with a very good crew, going to get high up into the, the 440s or even the 450s if you're using vents. In fact, you're probably going to struggle to get there, even with coated optics, and even with a quite skilled crew. But anyway, I think that's quite enough jibber-jabber. Let's see how it does on the battlefield. All right, so we're rolling out in the Carnarvon on the Italian map province. Now, you might be thinking, province, the current patch, you can't actually manage to get this for tier 8 and higher tanks, and that's because I actually played this vehicle quite a lot at Gamescom. And that's one of the reasons why I want to highlight that this is kind of a um, is it worth it video or my initial impressions rather than a full review of the tank which will be coming out later. And as we're going to see, yeah, my driving, I'm thinking more about what does this tank look rather than the rocks that Wargaming love to put behind trees and bushes, right? <laughs> now this is what the tank looks like if you don't use the... the the style, that that kind of British style, the British challenge style that you can have on this vehicle, if, if you're so inclined, the Fear Nought style, right? Down the side of the tank. One thing that's quite interesting here is that if you're using the regular style, I mean, you've got this motor oil just patched over a hole in the spaced armor here. When you think about it, it was what, 17 millimeters thick, I believe, the spaced armor on this tank. It's going to be useful against heat rounds and high explosive rounds, but um, armor piercing rounds still going to be able to go through it. So don't think that this thing is going to be like a super conqueror. If you're sitting there in your, your tier 9 medium tanks or even your tier 10 vehicles and you're thinking that the Carnarvon Action 10 is going to be that much of a beast on a ridgeline, unless he's using his gun depression, it's kind of not going to get there. Alright, so let's quickly assess the mobility of this vehicle. We're going up the slope at 24 kilometers an hour there. Definitely not bad packing just over that 14 horsepower per ton ratio, which is rather decent. I, you know what, I quite enjoy 14 horsepower per ton in my heavy tanks. Definitely feels like one of your more mobile heavy tanks in the game. And the traverse speeds, well, they're not great, especially on soft. That's probably one of the biggest downsides of the vehicle. The power to weight ratio doesn't really hold it too far back. And the fact that its top speed limit is 36 kilometers an hour as well is just a little bit better than one of your slightly slower heavies. So I'm not sure what Wargaming are really trying to do with this tank. It almost feels as if they've just decided to take the regular Carnarvon and change just enough about it to justify it as a, a novel vehicle. But really, I mean, if you enjoy the Carnarvon gameplay, the standard Carnarvon gameplay that is, then you should do pretty well with this tank. Now, the spaced armor, I guess it adds a tiny little bit of protection. But I'd say the biggest thing that you lose is just that 280 alpha damage and the wild damage per minute that you have. Now, is it worth sacrificing that wild damage per minute and the alpha damage to be able to gain just a, a little bit of mobility and a bit of penetration? Well, we'll have, to, we'll have to find out. Now, in this game, I'm going to try my very best to not dab the Tuki, even though we're not in the, the best of matchups. And you can see what this 20-pounder is capable of doing. I feel fairly reliable with the accuracy. But again, you just feel quite awkward. We, we've put in three shots now, and I've dealt, well, that's the fourth shot, 882. It's not particularly high, but when you get to have such a high rate of fire as that, then I guess it starts to be forgivable. Alright, so we actually bounce a Yank Tiger there off the front of our vehicle. Looks like I'm just managing to hide my lower plate over this ridge. And it looks like we put another shell into him, so I think I even hit that blind shot. He seems to be down nearly a thousand hit points there. Or maybe that one, yeah, because we've rolled two low shots against him, so I think we did manage to penetrate four. Alright, now using the 10 degrees of gun depression that we have on the Kanaba, now we're going to push forwards and we're going to try and find the side shots into this juicy tier 9 Japanese heavy. You'll notice I dip there because the, the weak point on that vehicle is actually right along the middle, just above the, the, the tracks there. There's like this rectangle that you can shoot right on the side that doesn't have any space protection at all, and you can go through that even with your tier 7 mediums, I presume. And that's really one of the only weak points of that tier 9 Japanese heavy. Alright, so we bounce off the WZ120, but we are shooting at long ranges here. This 226 millimeters of penetration used to be one of the special things about the Carnarvon back in the day. I mean, the Carnarvon's been in the game since patch 8.0. But now, eh, Wargaming seem to be just slamming in all of these new heavies with 230 millimeters of penetration as well with regards to, you know, the premium version of the 5100 or the Patriot, which just had 30 more millimeters of penetration than the T32 does, for example. So I guess that means that the standard penetration on the Carnarvon isn't that special anymore, but it's still more than enough in a, in a mid-tier matchup like this to be very successful with the vehicle, and you should be able to save yourself having to dab the Tuki. Now the standard shells cost 680, which is definitely something to take into account, because if you do penetrate two of these shells, that's going to cost you 
the best part of 1,300 credits, and that's if you aren't bouncing them, of course. And that's significant because a vehicle like the Defender, for example, has got a thousand shell cost and does 440. And so you've got to watch out with the Carnarvon, especially if you end up dabbing the two key, because the two key is very expensive with this tank. We're paying 4,400 credits per shot. That's a very quick way to rip into your profitability of the vehicle. Now I want to show you the, the Carnarvon. It's, it's kind of not that resilient, right? We, we just tanked with our hit points, really, pushing into the enemy lines. I'm going to try and track that Yag Tiger, and I get quite lucky that it looks like I bounced the 5100. He fires another one at me, and I'm going to angle my tank as best as I can here and hope that he hits my turret armor or hits my upper hull armor from here. And he's actually ricocheting quite a lot. We I think we bounced the 5100 three times there. Uh, yeah, three times, as we can see in the top left-hand corner of our screen. Now, those three shots would have been able to kill us 50% of the time if they had hit us. Well, just over 50 because we had 275 hit points left. So not bad there. The Carnarvon seems to do well as long as it's not completely caught out in the open or if it has to expose itself to the side against that ISM, for example. And once you do get going in this tank, you could see that we ripped apart that ISM fairly quickly indeed. Apart from the Revelerise, the ISM put one into us and then look at what we did to him. We put one, two, three, we tracked him, held him in place. And yeah, the DPM does feel significant. So if you're looking for a, a wild gun and you can try and harness this rate of fire and you feel comfortable shooting pretty much every like six seconds in this tank, it's just even slightly better. When you've got this thing fully equipped, you're going to be firing pretty much every five, just over five seconds. And so you're going to have to, to get used to that. It's, it's not for the player who wants to just invest in that one big shot like in the Defender for example. And there you go, we bounced the Revelerise there and it's only the T-54 Mod 1 from the side that puts one into us. And talking about bouncing Revelerises, we also bounce one from behind us. Hopefully I get a bounce from this CDC, hopefully he doesn't find my lower plate. And there you go, right into my tracks with perfect angling. That's how you want to angle the Carnarvon, just like that. And if you do that you're going to be okay and then it becomes they have to hit your lower plate. That's what it becomes in that scenario. Sure, they might have a 50-50 to go through your upper plate, but you've got to take those kind of risks. Now look, I'm not suggesting that this tank can just sit out in the front of a lot of vehicles. If you don't angle the tank at all, it's really not going to work out. What that was is just baiting the CDC into shooting the side of my vehicle and knowing the, the angling of my armor. Wow, that was a very surprising bounce actually there off that 5120. And that's my last standard round, I believe. So I fired a couple blind and now we're going to have to dip into the, the premium rounds of this vehicle which have very nice shell velocity, actually, 1,275. That's great, but mm, a lot of APCR shells start to, to nearly get there as well. So it doesn't look like this uh, WZ120 quite wants to come around the corner. Did I call that a 5120? If I did, I apologize. But bam, right onto the side of the vehicle. 3,500 damage dealt, 1,400 spotting. And yeah, not too bad of a game here for the Carnarvon Action 10 on Province. So not a bad round here for the Carnarvon Action 10. We pick up a steel wall medal for, I guess, those fortunate ricochets. But we also defended ourselves as well as we could, blocking 2,000 for the 12 shells that hit us, dealing 3,748 damage in not the best matchup, 1,474 base experience points, because I was spotting for myself at least most of the time, and 94,000 credits profit, so we didn't need to fire many premium rounds until we completely ran out of standard ammunition. But it's definitely something to take out that I can imagine in a tier 10 matchup when you're going to be wanting to dab that two key, or alternatively, when you're just ricocheting your standard rounds, the Carnarvon Action 10 is probably going to be quite expensive to resupply. But then again, when it comes to British Heavy, what choice do you have? Do you want to be playing that freaky FV215B at tier 7. Well, not really, but do you want to play the TOG to train up your British heavy crews? Yeah, I think you'd have to be a little bit crazy to want to play the TOG that much. And so if you absolutely, utterly love British heavy tanks and you want to train them up, then this is the one for you. This is far better, in my opinion, than the FV215B at tier 7. And I just realized, let me correct myself, it's the FV201, not the 215B. That's obviously the old tier 10 heavy. And while I feel that this vehicle has some really nice features, i.e. the aim time, the accuracy, and the damage per minute, I really feel like the alpha damage is going to hold it back for a lot of players and the fact that it's got a, a tragic lower plate and even its upper hull armor isn't phenomenal unless you're really focusing on using it well. And also the side armor, it's, it's really weak if you do get caught out even against tier 6 tanks, they're going to obliterate the side of your vehicle. Yeah, I can't imagine this tank being super friendly for beginning players. I think it'll do very, very well on a ridgeline, irrelevant of the, the hands of the player that it's in. 
I think it is a bit more of a specialist tank, and I wouldn't recommend it to a new player who's wanting to go in and be a little bit derpy. You're far better to play a Patriot, in my opinion. That's going to be far more forgiving. And while I also think that the upgrade in the damage per minute is not really worth the, the disadvantages that this thing has over the Patriot, it's by no means a terrible tank. And if you, you do play enough in the marathon to be able to unlock this for free, well, then you're going to be quite happy with it, I should imagine. Now, how much, how, what, what do I think it's worth in actual purchase price? I don't know. Personally, I think that if you can manage to complete about six or seven stages of the British campaign, yeah, I think it's worth it. But like hell would I be wanting to pay kind of like 40, 50, 60 euros for the Carnarvon Action 10. I don't think it's the latest and greatest tier 8 premium heavy. And I think if I already had a Defender or a Patriot... I'll probably give this one a bit of a skip. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. But if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released, it's time for another World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And this week, out of the 346 of you who voted, it's a real close one by the looks of it. Lots of lots of tanks in the in the, the tens and the mid tens here. But and the, also the WZ113G lost by a single vote to the T110E3. So come along right now as I probably play the best tank in the game for when you just absolutely, utterly want to push through or be this this rock that the enemies are going to wash upon and usually futilely. As I'm going to be showing the entirety of the tech tree so you can see if it's a line that's maybe worth grinding or alternatively if you already have the tanks pick up a few tips and tricks along the way. And I expect I'm going to be playing a few fan favourites as well, like the T95. So come along right now. Really looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been Epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.